little too spicy. Oh, uh, how's it going, everybody? Well, finally, I have, uh, I think I have the best way I can think of to uh, teach how to fall the best way. So that is gonna be my goal for today. Today we are gonna learn how to fall correctly, or in my opinion, the best way to fall when you are getting started in rollerblading. If you are already a decent rollerblader, maybe intermediate and you're already grinding, maybe doing a couple of ramps or transitions, but that at that level, I think it's a really good idea to know how to fall. It's a good thing to do because it'll give you a little bit more confidence for the tricks that you're trying, knowing that even if you do fall, it's not gonna be the end of your session. So today what we're actually gonna go through, or what I'm going to go through with you is actually a drill that I teach in my martial arts school to my students, which is called break falling. So uh, I thought about actually doing this at my school um, but I realize most people probably don't uh, have a mat or something with like nice foam that is built to take impact. So I figured, you know what, instead of that, let's do this at home with things that we probably have. So this is going to be like a warm up that you could do at home. What I have is just a fleece blanket and um, I stole my wife's yoga mat. So uh, just in the beginning, it's really important. You don't want to hurt yourself. Um, you don't probably want to do this on a hardwood floor or a concrete floor. You probably want to get some kind of softness just so that as you get used to this, you're not going to cause any unnecessary bruises or, you know, injuries. So again, what we're going to do is brake falling. Brake falling? What in the world is brake falling? <laughs> brake falling is when you're actually going to uh, break your fall by spreading out the surface area of your body in an order that actually helps disperse all of the energy out of your body in a safer way than rather it coming right out your elbow or right out your hip or breaking a bone or something like that. We want to take all of that energy and we want to spread it. So what we want to do actually is uh, get into our position, starting off like this. And what we wanna start off by doing is learning how to at least go from a squatting position to our break fall position. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna start going from side to side. And then from there, what we'll do is we'll actually start rolling into that fall and getting a little bit used to it in a faster pace. Beginning with uh, the basics of brake falling. What we want to start off is we want to be about on our soft area. Again, I, I'm using a yoga mat on top of like a fleece blanket. That's all you need. And um, what I'm going to do here, starting in my squat position, or uh, if you play baseball or if you were a catcher, like a catcher's position, you're up on the balls of your feet. And you want to work first on just getting used to rolling onto the sides of your thighs, all right? and then get back up and roll the other way. Boom, and you wanna get used to it, uh, just kind of getting onto your hip, but you don't wanna just be on your hip. You wanna let the full leg equal pressure as you roll onto it. So you're going from here, boom. Use your hand to stop yourself as you're getting warmed up. Later on, you're not gonna use that hand. Boom, onto that thigh. Again, not just on the hip, all right? One more time. Boom, onto the thigh, back up into your squat position, boom, onto your thigh. All right, now, what do you do next after you get down onto this side of your leg? Again, not the hip. The next thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna raise this arm, or this arm, depending on which way you're going to fall. So, to slow it down as best as I can, we're going to bring it down, hip, open that arm up, and reach as you come down. The reason I wanna reach is I wanna prevent myself from doing this. Again, we wanna spread the energy out. We don't want it to come all out in one hand. And if I don't focus all of that energy into one hand, you can kinda of see. goes up the rest of my body and it takes all of that force in just a couple of bones in my arm, one bone up here, and into my shoulder joint. So if you've ever 
sprained a wrist, broken a wrist, or broken an arm, you probably know what it feels like to hit the ground like that. So, to recap, we're going hands out, onto the side of the thigh, arm up, and down. You want to spread your surface area. We have the full leg down, we have the hand out. On the other side, back into our squat position, side of the leg, down, arm up, and then down and spread. So, now we start speeding that up a little bit. What I wanna do, I'm gonna get a little bit over on this side of the frame. I want to go leg, body, arm in that sequence. One, two, three. On the other side, scooch over to the side so you guys can see. Side of the leg, one, two, three. And what I'm doing is I'm allowing that force as I'm hitting the ground to roll and start dispersing out of my body so that instead of taking it all in one of the, my ribs or a hip or in the shoulder or trying to turn and take it in, in the back, I just roll and let it come out. in sequence so that it doesn't hurt me. The worst case scenario, my hand gets a little bit red. I'd much rather slap my hand against the ground and maybe bruise it rather than taking a couple of broken ribs, bruised ribs, a broken arm, dislocated shoulder, or anything like that. Yeah, it might be uncomfortable. You might take a little bit more um, overall damage, but it'll be like less, if that makes sense. So now let's bring the other elements in. Now, we don't always get to decide which direction we fall whenever we are falling, so that's why it's important to start practicing left side and right side and kind of get used to it rocking back and forth, going to the right, back up, and then to the left. And that starts to train your brain how to kind of ease into the fall and not fight it. Again, when you start to react and put those arms out, those are the first things that are gonna take injury, and you really wanna spread as much surface area out on the ground. But again, like I said, you're not gonna be able to decide whether you go to the right, whether you go to the left, whether you go forward, or whether you go back. Now, when you actually go that way, you wanna make sure that you are careful in how you do it. Notice when I do this side, I use only one arm and I have my other hand and my leg. If I am going very fast and I need to actually roll, I can do that. Now, when I'm going backwards, you think, oh no, put my arms back. Well now both your arms and probably your shoulders and collarbones got injured, and that's gonna suck. Now what you wanna do when you are going backwards, and I'll turn to the side for this one, as you are going backwards, instead of putting those arms up, you're gonna put them out to the side. Now from here, that means that my arms are going to open as I fall. So what I'm doing here is rolling onto my butt, lower back, and then letting both of my arms spread that energy, which actually allows me to come back. And not get hurt. All of that energy comes out of my hands. Even one of them wasn't on the cover and it just slapped a little bit. You probably heard it. And it doesn't really hurt that bad. It's no worse than a big, you know, high five or smacking your hands together. But I'd much rather have that than a huge back injury or smacking the back of my head. Which brings me to the final point no matter what, whenever you're falling, it's a good idea to keep your chin tucked down. Now, what that'll do is that helps stabilize your neck and when you, dis when you start falling backwards, that's gonna keep your head from hitting the ground. Even when you have a helmet, it never feels fun to hit the back of your head so because it really rings your bell, right? Your ocular nerves are back there, so if you kind of see a flash and next thing you know you're dizzy and you have a concussion. Now, it's always smart to wear a helmet it's always a good idea to wear protective gear, and when you do, that only makes this even better. So, 
Next up, we're gonna actually go over what kind of gear do I use, uh, especially that kind of helps me when I'm falling. Going over kind of my everyday uh, gear that I'm gonna be riding with, uh, I actually, I always uh, ride with rest guards. I have actually messed up my hands and my wrists uh, pretty good over the years, be it from either, you know, martial arts hitting things or uh, falling and just falling incredibly wrong. Even though I've been practicing how to do all that falling stuff in the martial arts school for years, you still react sometimes and accidentally throw a palm down or try to catch yourself with your hands. So for that very reason, I really like, these have been my favorite wrist guards uh, so far, the Anui uh, City Braces. They have a, uh, a double construction, so they actually have an extra pad that goes into the hand and two scales on either side to make sure that the wrist doesn't bend back. But the nice part about a hand slider is you want that to be that extra buffer so that when you actually fall on your hand, you're not going to completely destroy it or cut it up with gravel, or if it's gonna slide, you're not going to actually, you know, take all the skin off of your hand. That would be bad, right? So kind of a rough idea. If I have the palm guard, as I'm coming down on that side of my leg, boom, and then now I can smack that way harder and not really have to worry about completely bruising my hand. You know, there's skaters out there that don't like to ride with pads. Kudos to them, all to, you know, whatever floats your boat. But especially being uh, 36 years old, I want to skate for another decade or so, and even longer. So I wanna make sure that uh, I'm taking care of my body and I also don't wanna hold myself back and really kinda of push it and see what I can do. So it's important to make sure that your gear matches what you need. I use low pro knee pads. I used to wear those uh, bigger ones, uh, the shell ones over the knees, but I don't like the way it binds my knees up. Um, so I use low pro ones. And then I have Inui shin guards. Uh, always good for whenever you slip off the top sides or anything like that. I recently got some crash pads. These are actually uh, exactly similar to the uh, Ripple shorts, that Ripple gear, Ripple impact gear. These uh, don't say Ripple on them, but they're the exact same pattern in the back thighs and then the butt and things like that. These things I actually tested out on a live stream earlier. If you are interested, go back and check it out. In the first uh, five falls, especially when you're landing on the full leg and then using the rest of the body to disperse the energy, it was not half bad to have a full shield and feel instead of a little something, pretty much absolutely nothing. So um, I'm gonna keep riding these and I'll give you kind of like a full review of them as I really test them out. I haven't been to a park yet since it's been winter and much real crappy weather, but yeah. Oh, and um, don't forget, even when you think you're doing very well or you're very confident, it doesn't hurt to have a helmet. I still wear one, especially when I'm going and trying like tricks that are gonna be well over uh, transition or if I'm gonna try and big, do a bigger jump or if I'm doing something I'm just generally not comfortable with. It doesn't hurt to have one of these in the back seat of the car just to give you a little extra courage if you want. Maybe insurance. Let's call it insurance, not courage. How does this all translate to skates? Same exact idea. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get your skates on. Get used to getting into this type of position if you can. If you can balance it, that's great. But again, if you are practicing this fall, you should already be, you know, learning the basics of skating, knowing how to sidestep, knowing how to go forward, stop that, go backwards, bubbles and things like that. All the basics are good to know. And I think falling is definitely one of the basics that should be known by anybody who starts off skating or if you never really practiced falling, it's a good time to start. So now that I'm on my blades, I'm a little higher up off the ground. So now I want to get used to this. Kind of like practicing Royales or full torques. I want to get onto my thigh, down, slap. Back up onto my blades. Over to my thigh, down, slap. Now I can start accelerating that as I feel comfortable. Side down, slap. 
back up onto my blades. Again, side down slap. If I want to go backwards, that's both blades forwards, side down slap. Let's do that again, because this happens a lot. If you have your blades shoot out in front of you and you take a tailbone right to the ground, let me know if that's happened to you before. It hurts. That tailbone bruise is gonna be there for a while. So when you're going and your skates fall out in front of you, boom, you kind of want to choose which butt cheek do you want to hit the ground first, hit it and let both hands slap the ground so that the force does not come out of your back. Again, a little forward motion, and there we are. I let my whole body get in contact with the ground in sequence, but I did not fight it. When you fight it, this is going to hurt. This is what it looks like. Ugh. Your body really gets jarred at impact, and then you react to it, your muscles tighten up, and injuries happen, right? So now, giving you a kind of an idea, let me put a little bit of motion into these to kind of hopefully tie all of these ideas up together. So, a little bit of forward motion, and kind of like a baseball slide out is the idea here that you want. So if I'm starting off over here on my set and I'm going forward, I want to out and hit the ground, if that makes sense. One more time. I have a little forward, I put my butt down, slide, and smack the ground at the end. From this angle, forward, and again, I'm putting my feet forward, because the idea here when I'm going forward, if I'm going to fall forward, I'd much rather fall forward with my feet in front of me than with my head flying forward. Can you break fall correctly going forward? Yes, but I think that's also a little more advanced, but in the same sense, it's the same idea. If I'm going forward, I want to spread as I go down. That way, all of the energy gets spread amongst my body versus one point because that one point is going to get sprained, broken, bruised, whatever you want. <laughs> it's going to happen. So hopefully this helps. Um, next, what I'm going to do is I actually will show you a couple of my own falls and a couple of uh, ones that I think were the correct way to fall and some examples also of falling like an idiot and uh, reacting to the fall, which uh, ended up causing some injuries. And uh, so let's go through them. A little too spicy. Oh, that was close. Alright guys, I hope this video helped you out. Um, if it did, leave a comment down below, or if you have any questions, leave them down below, and I'm happy to answer them as quickly as I can. Um, I really think falling is a very important thing, or knowing how to fall is an important thing in skating. So, uh, my goal, again, is to help you guys learn how to do this safely, maybe meld a little bit of that martial arts experience into the skating, especially to help keep us safe. And know that whenever we're trying that next trick, that if we do fall, well, we have some control over it, and hopefully we can keep ourselves healthy and safe to keep trying more and more tricks. Again, if you like this video, uh, subscribe, leave a like, comment down below, uh, check us out on Instagram, TikTok, all those fun stuff. It's the same thing as my uh, YouTube name. It's my full name, Alex Alexa, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, guys.